What's up, everybody? Welcome back to the channel. Today's training is one of those trainings that is going to fundamentally change how you build websites. It's very powerful, very important content. But here's the thing. It's not fancy content. It's not flashy content. And I liken this to jujitsu. I've been doing jujitsu 10 plus years. Pretty much everybody that's been doing it a long time knows what separates the black belts from everybody else is the black belts understand the underlying principles and the fundamentals better than anybody else that's around them, right? Or anybody below them, let's say. And so I want you to kind of think of web development as the same way. It's fun to go on YouTube and watch a bunch of flashy stuff and learn about the latest and greatest animations and the coolest stuff and, and, and try to implement that into websites. But if you don't have the fundamentals and you don't have a solid grasp of the underlying principles, you end up building sites that are absolute chaos. And they may look okay. Like when you pull up the website in a browser, th the site may look good. If everybody might say, wow, that's a really great site. But when somebody peeks at the underlying architecture of the website, they start to see, wow, this thing is actually a disaster. And this is a big problem because we need to be building websites that are scalable and maintainable, right? And organized and clean and efficient. And if you don't understand the underlying principles, you're just styling things, throwing classes here, throwing classes there, styling at ID levels, doing all this stuff randomly and cool shit, right, that you saw on YouTube, it creates a massive problem. What happens is, and I call this the three month rule or the six month rule, sometimes there's a two week rule, but here's what happens, right? You, you build a website, you launch it, live, whatever, it looks great. Then you go on, you build another site, another site, another site. And then it comes time to go back to that original site. The client's ready to add more things to it, to iterate, to change a few things. And you realize, wow, I, I don't know what these classes were for. I don't know what they do. I don't know what they control. I don't know if I'm going to break something by changing this. Or you end up with like, a massive workload because you've got to do a lot of stuff manually. You, you didn't build any components that are reusable. You don't have the, the proper class structure in place. You're doing a lot of manual work when you really shouldn't need to be. And if you work in teams, this problem just compounds. The whole team is like this. And then sites become basically unmanageable. And you have to do a lot of extra styling, add a lot of bloat. You have to do workarounds. It, it's an absolute nightmare and nobody wants to work on these projects. In this training today, I'm going to help you avoid all of that. I'm going to teach you a system for styling, a system for class organization and naming. And that system is called BEM, B-E-M. It stands for Block Element Modifier. But what you have to do is mentally prepare yourself to say, today, I'm going to work on mastering some fundamentals. Today, I'm not going to worry about flashy, fancy stuff. I'm going to focus on core principles. And that is going to move you leaps and bounds forward from where you are now. So let's go ahead and get into the training here. So this is called BIM 101, how to make web styling organized and scalable. And I, I put a little paragraph here in layman's terms, it better said this way, how to build sites that won't make you wanna jump off a bridge when it's time to maintain them or build upon them. This training is all about making your life easier. And I wanna challenge you that instead of trying to, to, trying to place your name on like, ooh, I do fancy stuff, flashy stuff, I know how to do all this complicated stuff, make a name for yourself in terms of saying like, I build efficient, clean websites that are scalable and, and maintainable and that aren't a nightmare, that don't make people wanna jump off a bridge when, when they go to uh, iterate or, or build upon them. So we're gonna talk about why BIM, like why are we using BIM versus you know any other framework or system or whatever. What's wrong with the old way? I'm gonna show you, I pulled up three code pens. These are random code pens by three different developers. We're gonna just inspect the structure of what they've built and we're gonna talk about it and we're gonna see what the pitfalls are. We're gonna see why th these methods that they're using are hugely problematic. And then what we're gonna do is we're going to build this actual uh, three column grid with these cards and we're gonna 
use BIM. And I've used BIM in tutorials before. You've probably seen me use it, but I've never done a dedicated video on it. So this is the dedicated BIM 101 video. And like I said, this is a game changer. It's absolutely going to fundamentally change how you build websites going forward and you're going to love it like it's not flashy it's not fancy but you are absolutely going to love it it's going to be one of those trainings that you mark down and save and say this is one of the trainings that really changed my development all right okay so first things first let's let's talk about the why let's go down the entire list of why and then we're going to take a look at these cards right here and then we're going to build something we're going to look at these uh, other dev cards we're going to we're going to cover a lot in this in this tutorial so why bim first of all organization your classes your class names your styling it's going to become insanely organized and organization in a massive website project right you're putting 35 40 50 hours in some cases into these website projects, at the end of the day, you want to say, wow, all right, this site looks great, but underneath it all, it's clean, it's efficient, it's organized, it's understandable, it's scalable, it's maintainable. That is that is a, a real win. Building a pretty site that's, that's none of those things is not a win, that's a huge fail. That's a huge, let me, let me say that again, that's a huge fail. You've got to build maintainable, scalable websites. So organization is absolutely critical. Scalability, which you're gonna see as we get into the actual details of this stuff, what that means. Semantic accuracy and readability. You'll see exactly what that means as we get into this, but your classes, you should be able to read the class names and know exactly what that class does and what it's targeting without needing any comments or documentation of any sort. It should be absolutely obvious. Class name collisions. We're going to avoid naturally class name collisions. I'll show you what those are and why they're hugely problematic. This happens on more builds than you think, and it creates a lot of code bloat and a lot of workarounds that just should not be necessary. BIM is easier to write. So when you actually have to go into a style sheet and write a little bit of CSS, BIM makes it so much easier to write. It's easier to debug because of the organization and the semantic accuracy and readability and the lack of uh, class name collisions. That makes debugging very, very easy. It's easier to modify components with BIM. Uh, you can avoid specificity issues because BIM is a very flat code structure. Um, so some of these things are very technical and we're not going to get too far in because this is BIM 101. But I just want you to know there's a long list of benefits besides what you might see as the obvious things. Um, we're going to have faster rendering. Um, you know, this is a little bit debatable, but on larger sites, I think it does start to matter. But browsers read left to right, right? And so when you add a lot of specificity to your selectors, which you have to do in traditional CSS modeling, the browser has to read those long strings and then the details, right? Whereas BIM is extremely flat. There's not a lot of specificity, so it just goes top down and the browser can render faster. And then there's self-documenting code, right? If you're using a lot of random class names and all this stuff, you have to put a lot of comments in and not everybody does, which makes the problem even worse, but you have to put a lot of comments in to explain why you did something or what controls what. Whereas BIM is self-documenting code because of the naming structure, it's so semantically accurate and readable that you don't need any additional documentation beyond it. It documents itself as you write the code. Okay, so that's kind of the, the list of why BIM. Now what I wanna do is I wanna take a look at some examples of other developers and how they've created certain components. And um, this is gonna show you very clearly, I think, where so many people go wrong. And I didn't just hand pick these. I didn't like look through a list of a hundred and find like, oh, there's finally one that wasn't done right. No, these are easy to find. This stuff happens every day, all day long across, like most websites, I would say, have this problem. Uh, if you're not using a specific naming convention like BIM, you're going to absolutely come into these problems all the time. So let's go through and, and just see if we can diagnose what's wrong and why it's wrong. Not just like uh, as an opinion, it's more like, no, here's objectively why this causes major issues in development. Okay, so here is our first card, which by the way, aside from this line right here, which I think is a little SVG issue going on, just pretend that line didn't exist. 
objectively, this is a good looking card. It's a really, it's modern. It's got, you know, good colors. It's got good fonts, whatever. It looks fantastic. But how something looks is separate from its underlying code structure. And so what we always have to ask ourselves is, is this scalable? Is it maintainable? Or is this beautiful card going to cause me nightmares, right? <laughs> I don't want these cards to cause me nightmares. I don't want anything on a website to cause me nightmares. And unfortunately, this is the type of card that would absolutely cause nightmares on a real build. So let's take a look. The first thing is it uses a class. This entire card right here is a class called card. And I want you to remove yourself in these examples from CodePen for, um, for a minute and just pretend that these components are used on an actual website. A 50 hour build has this card and ask yourself this question. Are there any other cards? Of course there are. Cards in modern web design are, are like all over the place. They're used all the time. And so we have a semantically um, devoid. It's devoid of semantic meaning, right? It, we don't understand what kind of card this is. We don't know that it's a, a this is a, a bio card, like a, a team member card, right? But how would you know that? You're just seeing this uh, contextually, like, you know, empty class called card. Now we come down here, that's the first problem. We come down here and we do see that, oh wow, he's put card dash header. So the header that's related to the card, this seems like we're actually on a good track other than the fact that card doesn't mean anything. So card header, that's good. We come down here, there's card header after, okay. Card header bar. So that's a bar inside the card. Probably, maybe, I, I don't know what that would be. It doesn't give me a lot of semantic accuracy, but at least it's associated with the card. I know it's part of the card. Oh, then we have this SR only. I, I don't know what that is. Um, we have the buttons that are inside the card. We're gonna talk about buttons in just a minute. Card he header slanted edge. Right? This is obviously the slanted edge, so no problem there. We're good. We come down, and then we have card body, okay? Oh, no. Oh, no. Here's where we really start to run into major issues. This just seems like they started out with so much promise, and then they got lazy. I, I That's what I'm guessing happened, because look at this. Name. There's just a class name, name, all by itself. And I'm guessing that that's the person's name, but... It, if you're looking at the code, you no longer know that this is associated with this card, right? It's just a random class called name. Now, here's a question for you. What happens if something else on the website is a name and somebody else or even the same person two weeks later because they forgot, they use the class name again? This is what we call class collision. You have now two classes being used on separate components that are colliding with each other. And that's a major, major problem. Sometimes, let's say that this name is styled exactly the way on the other component, okay? So you put the class name on the other component, which is a different component. It's not even a bio card. Let's say it's something else. And you don't realize that there's a class collision because the styling is actually exactly the same, the way that you want it to be. But just because it's the way you want it to be now, doesn't mean it's always going to be that way. And what you've effectively done is you've locked that problem into existence forever. You can never now escape that class collision problem because as you build more of those other components and more of these components, which both share the, the class name, you realize when it's time to make a change to one of them, you can't change any of them. Because if one change over here breaks all of these things over here. And so you've effectively created a, a, a locked problem in this website. And this happens all the time. And so the, the workaround now is, okay, well, we have to separate this group of components over here. We have to give that name a brand new class and we have to style it with the new class, which obviously causes a lot of duplication issues, code bloat. There's a lot of extra code for no reason because you're fixing a problem that should never have happened in the first place. But look at this. This is not the only issue. Take that problem and multiply it many more times because we now have a job title class that's exactly the same way. It's independent from the card. We have a bio class that's on its own, independent from the card. Nobody knows that these things are related to this card. And if you have a class collision issue with these, you're locking these problems into the website build forever into eternity as well. A social accounts image. 
um, social accounts A, which is targeting a link. Uh, then we have a card footer. And then look at this. Once again, we like we went back for a minute into, okay, here's something related to the card. And then we jumped immediately back into just a random class name called stat. And this is, you can see the problems here, right? Okay, so I'm gonna move on to the next example. We have this movie card because all the examples have a little bit different things going on. Again, let me make the case. You look at the card on the front end, that's a beautiful card. That's, that's a really great job with design and it's it UX, it's all good. But what is the underlying development of this card looking like? Is this card scalable, maintainable, or is this yet another card that if I start to use this throughout a website, that's going to cause me massive headaches? Let's take a look. So we go down and we see, okay, this one is actually improved. It's called movie card. So there is contextual meaning in the class name. All right, so I know it's a movie card, that's fantastic. There's a random container here. I don't know what that, that does. Maybe that's the background. Maybe that's unrelated to the card, so maybe that's okay. Oh no, now we have a problem. Hero, all right. And, and now you can see the real problem with semantically inaccurate or contextually inaccurate class names or just random class names. The class hero actually controls the hero section of this card, but hero is a common term in development used in other places, like the hero of a website is the uh, under underneath the header, that intro section of the website typically has, you know, a, a color that pops or a background image or something like that. The very large H1 is going on in the hero section. You get it, right? You know what a hero is. So why are we using a random hero class inside of a card? Nobody knows if you came, let's do the three month rule or the six month rule. You come to this website to maintain it or add to it. Even your own, even if you did this three months later, I promise you, you are not gonna remember that you called this thing the hero. And you also can't tell me with any confidence whatsoever, that you did not use the hero class anywhere else on the website. Maybe you didn't, but maybe you did. And if you don't know, with 100% confidence, you can't make changes to the styling because you risk breaking something else somewhere else. And this is always a problem when you use random, semantically inaccurate class names that aren't linked to specific components, okay? So we're gonna come down and we're gonna see again, cover. This is the cover right here. But looking at the code base, you don't know that this is linked to the movie card. You, you don't know that this has any, the cover of what? And, and even worse, cover is used in many different capacities in web development. So it's it not only does it not give us any idea that this is related to movie card, in our mind, it absolutely makes us think this could be used any number of places. I cannot change this styling with any confidence whatsoever because if that's used anywhere else, which it may very well be because it's such a generic name, I could be breaking something else on the website. So you're automatically having to avoid class collisions and that causes code duplication and bloating like we talked about. Same thing here, they've got a class called details. I mean, come on now, anything could have a detail, right? Any part of the website could have a details. So I can't with confidence know that, hey, if I change this padding, it's only gonna change whatever the details are down here. And I don't even know, this, this may be the details, I'm, I'm not really sure. So we've got you know a, a random title one. I mean, these are just class names that here's a random likes, description. I mean, come on now, anything on a website can have a description, right? So how do I know what this goes to? This is chaos, this right here, you can look at the card all you want and say, that's a beautiful card, they did a really good job, but in reality, they failed. This is 100% failure, 100% failure. I don't care what it looks like. I don't care how beautiful it is. It's 100% failure because it's not scalable and it's not maintainable. And that's what I'm talking about, right? You can take people who can make beautiful things, fancy shit, but they can also make the website an absolute disaster underneath. And you, if you wanna be a black belt, right? You've gotta be clean, you've gotta be efficient, you gotta have a tight game, you gotta understand the principles, you gotta understand the philosophy, okay? That's what makes, that's what separates a black belt from every, everybody else, going back to the jujitsu analogy. Okay, so I think you get the point here. Let's take a look at these profile cards, because these are even worse. These are even worse, and again, 
these look good. I mean, the icons are a little big for my taste. There's we, maybe some spacing uh, improvements that could be done here, but still, this is a, a this is clean. All right, it's, it's pretty clean. The question is not how clean is it, how beautiful does it look on the front end in the browser. For a developer, for an agency, for a freelancer, for a business client, the question is how scalable and maintainable is this? How easy is it to iterate on? How easy is it to add to? All right, let's take a look. The class is SNP1578. Does that mean anything to anybody? Absolutely not. It means nothing to nobody, okay? We keep coming down and we see, all right, we are, we're introducing a brand new problem here. And this is why I use this example. I liked this one because it, it does introduce this new problem. So a lot of people, um, instead of putting classes on everything, they style HTML elements. This is actually targeting an image inside of SNP1578. But when you target HTML elements, you run into a very unique problem. And you can see that problem here, that this is instructing every image inside of SNP1578, oops, I don't wanna move that around, to look this way, to have this styling right here. Well, what happens if one month later, somebody decides, now this is a very tiny card, whatever, but maybe it's a bigger card, just expand this in your mind. Somebody decides we need to add another image to this card. This card needs to have two images. You're forced, because of the way this is structured, to every, every image is gonna look exactly the same. You're not allowed to have an image that looks different unless you do extra work. You have to now put a new class on that new image and style it separately. And you're still having somewhat of a conflicting, you're running into specificity issues at this point, right? Because you have conflicting code. You're telling all images to look a certain way, but then you're telling that you're having to tell this new image to actually look differently. Um, so I avoid, I think it's very smart to decouple styling HTML from CSS, right? Don't target actual HTML elements. And you see it down here again, SNP 1578H3. So we're styling the H3 a certain way, but what if this needs to be an H4 instead of an H3? So somebody comes along and they say, hey, actually an H3 doesn't make sense in the logical flow of the headings on this website. These cards need to be H4s, okay? So you change the cards to H4s and suddenly you realize you've lost all your styling because the styling only applies if this heading is an H3, but you change it to an H4. Now you've lost all your styling. So making a change in the HTML now requires you to go make a change in the CSS. That's double the workload, right? You had one area that could be changed. Now you have to go to a second area because of the way this was structured. If this heading had a class like heading, for example, not, that's not a good one, but let's just say it had the class heading. You could go change the SNP1578 heading. Um, you, you can style that a certain way. And then it doesn't matter if it's an H2, an H3, an H4, an H5, an H6, not an H whatsoever. It could just be text. And it would always look the exact same way because you're styling a class and not an HTML element. The, the styling does not rely on a specific HTML structure. In this um, method right here, it absolutely relies on a specific HTML structure. And if you change to have two images or you change this to an H4, you lose your styling. And then you're forced to go make a change in a second place. You're doubling the amount of work that you have to do. Okay. So that was the example there. So I think you've seen now the problems with the old method. Let's talk about the new method. So what I'm gonna do here is just quickly, we'll use a text and I'm gonna use text L to make this big. Actually, let's do text XL, just so you guys can see very easily. And we're gonna talk about the structure of BIM. So BIM, like this, B-E-M, stands for block, that's the B, element, that's the E, and M, that's the modifier, okay? And so, Let's talk about what makes a block. What is a block? A block is a reusable component. It's something that stands alone and can be used anywhere on the website. So if we look at something like um, these team cards, a team card, one of them, not all of them together, just one card is a component. I can use that card here. Um, I can use that card on a different page. It will make sense, right? Because it's somebody's uh, bio card. It's a standalone component. That in BIM is a block. 
Everything that goes inside of a block is an element for the most part. Now, we'll come back to that in just a second. But this image right here is an element of this block. This heading is an, well, I can't highlight. This element is a element of this block, this heading. This little tagline here, their title, is an element of this block. You get it, right? And then the bio is an element. Each icon is an element. And then you also have invisible elements, right? Where this image might have a wrapper. And so that wrapper is an element of the block. This text and icons may have a body wrapper or like an inner wrapper. That is an element of the block as well. So you can have visible elements. You can have invisible elements. Now, can you use, let's say you had something where you needed to put a button inside here. A button is a block because a button obviously is used anywhere on the website, right? So a button is a block. Can you have a block inside of a block? Yes, you can have a block inside of a block. How you handle that is a little bit different, but for the most part, you're thinking about a block is a component, elements go inside the block, and then that leaves us with a modifier. A modifier is when you take either a component like this, a block, and you change how it looks. Not its structure necessarily, just how it looks. So let's say you wanted a dark version of one of these cards, you would use a modifier to make it dark. And BIM makes modification very, very easily. I'll show you exactly how that's done. We're gonna build these cards. We're gonna show you how to do every step of the process, okay? Um, so you can also modify elements. So an element inside of a block can also have its own modifier. And sometimes you make the decision of, do I wanna modify the element or do I wanna modify the block, which can modify the elements. Modifying the block, which is the parent item, can absolutely modify its children. And a lot of times that's the most efficient way to do it. But when we get there, we'll talk about that more. Okay, so we know what a block is, we know what elements are, and we know what modifications are. Now what we have to talk about is the actual structure of class naming. So if I was going to do this block right here, let me pull this over, all right? Let me check on my recording, make sure we're all still good. Yeah, we are, okay. So if I was gonna create this block right here, I need a name for my block that is semantically accurate. And so what I'm gonna call this is a team card, right? So this is a team member. Now you could put team member card or you could put team card. I'm going team card because I like shorter names, all right? But as long as it's still semantically accurate, people can understand what it is, then you're good to go. There's no BIM police that are gonna come out of the woodwork and arrest you because you didn't put team member card instead of team card, right? Um, you just make sure it's semantically accurate and, and people can grasp what it is. So the way you start out is with the block, right? So there's a team card, and then I'm just gonna duplicate this. I wanna space these out a little bit, so I'm gonna do an owl S, okay. So you have team card, that goes on your block. Then elements, every element, every single element that you put inside of a block needs a custom class because we don't want to have to style HTML elements, right? We just talked about why that's a problem. We're gonna target classes that are part of this card component. So every element needs its own class. And the way that you attach in the actual uh, CSS class name structure, the way that you attach elements to cards or elements to blocks, I'm sorry, there's a lot of terms, elements to blocks is with double underscore, okay? So I would put team card double underscore and then I would put the name of the element. So this is gonna be the image or you could say headshot, right? It may be better to use headshot because that's more semantically accurate, right? It, it, it leaves nothing to the imagination of like, what could the image be, right? Maybe these were images, I don't know. Those are icons, but somebody may misinterpret. If you say headshot, nobody's gonna misinterpret that, right? So we're gonna say team card headshot as an example. So now you see that the headshot, when you look at the class, you know, okay, there's a team card, block, which is, a, I know that this is a reusable component basically. Um, and then there's a headshot inside of that team card. I can know that just by looking at the names. There's no guessing whatsoever. Now I'm going to duplicate this again. And we're gonna come over here and oh, we're not gonna go over there. I keep going to the right. I need to go to the left. All right, so now we have, let's say there's a heading, right? Or the person's name. All right, so we can do team card name. So name is more semantically accurate than heading. Now. You know, I, I do heading a lot, right? 
Um, I'm going to change this to name. So we know that there's a team card. We know that there's a headshot in the team card. We know there's a person's name in the team card. Okay. So now I'm going to duplicate again. We're going to take a look at the next thing. So this could be job title, right? So team card, you could do job title or you could do title. All right. It doesn't matter either way, as long as you're, you know, you're giving it its own class and it's semantically accurate. Okay. If we did job title, very important here, one dash, always put dashes as spaces. So anything that would be a space becomes a dash. You don't want to do this. You don't want to do like job title like that. Because when you have longer names, it's, it makes this very unreadable. It's very, it takes a lot of focus and concentration to figure out what the heck this is versus this is much easier to read. And this is the standard, like in URLs, it's the standard. This is just the standard, okay? Now, when we get to modifiers, you're gonna see why a double dash is important versus a single dash, all right? But we're gonna keep going with one more thing, right? Remember I said there's an invisible element, maybe this image wrapper, um, so there's a div wrapping this image. That's the image wrapper. All right, so what we want to do is we're going to come down here and instead of headshot, I'm going to do headshot dash wrapper. So I have a team card which has a headshot wrapper and it has a headshot. And just by looking at the names, I know that that headshot is inside the headshot wrapper. That's what a wrapper is for, right? Then I know it has a name. I know it has a job title. And then it also has, uh, let's just say an icon, right? So we're going to do, and I can do here, I can do social icon. So I just want you to look at the organization here. And we're going to talk about one more thing of not to do with BIM. And I'm going to call myself out because I've done this in the past. And I'm saying flat out, just don't do this. Do it, do it the way I'm, I'm explaining it here in, in BIM 101. Okay. So I want you to see the organization that's going on here. I want you to see the semantic accuracy that's going on here, that anybody could come here and, and look at this and know basically what the structure of the component is. All, every element that's involved in here, I didn't list them all, but it's, it's enough for you to get the picture, right? Um, let's add one more thing. There's gonna be a team card, double dash. We're gonna modify the team card and modifiers use a double dash. And we're gonna modify it with dark. So I know there's a team card and I know there's a team card dark version, all right? Now the question is, do I need to create a bunch of classes for the dark version? And the answer is no, you don't because you're modifying the parent and we can modify the children using the parent modifier class without creating a bunch of extra class names. In BIM, this is called a mix and this is very, very powerful and it makes modification very easy and you're gonna see exactly how it works when we actually build this component, okay? But I mean, look at the organization. Now ask yourself, does this pass the three month rule? Does this pass the six month rule? Absolutely, because six months from now, you're gonna come back and you're gonna know exactly what a team card is. You're gonna know what all these components are. And here's the biggest thing. There's no class collision. There's no chance of class collision. You know that it's not like there's a random social icon class or there's a random name class like we saw in some of our bad examples or a random headshot class. These are physically linked to team card in the class name. These have not been used anywhere else for any other component. I can guarantee that 100%, which means that my website is safe to edit and build upon safe to iterate on, safe to make changes to, because I know there's no there's no chance of class collisions. So there's no bloated code. There's no having to rework things. There's no having to do workarounds. I know that this component is, is super clean, squeaky clean, all right? Squeaky clean. Um, all the development is like this on the build. So I know all of the development is squeaky clean. This is what you want to try to achieve. Now let's see how we actually build something with this, okay? So I'm gonna go ahead and uh, we're gonna delete these. Let me go into the structure panel here and I'm gonna dismiss this meeting notice. Okay, so we're gonna go delete, 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 delete. Okay, now we're back to a clean slate. All right, so, oh, I was going to say one more thing, sorry. Let me add a text back and this is very important though, so pay attention. All right, so you don't wanna do this team card and then target something like team card headshot. This is not necessary in BIM. And in fact, this is discouraged in BIM. This is not flat CSS. 
This is adding specificity and it can lead to specificity issues as well. So you wanna, and remember we talked about the efficiency of browsers having to read left to right and follow the string. You don't wanna do this with the caveat of when you're modifying, you'll, you'll be doing this, but in general, you wanna avoid this as much as possible. So literally when you're writing CSS, let me go into style sheets. I'm gonna create a style sheet called BIM. We're gonna need this in a minute anyway. I'm gonna zoom in. And if I was writing CSS to style my team card, it would be team card and then styling goes here. And then it would be team card, double underscore, and we'll do headshot as an example, okay? Styling goes here. And then it would be, t and I'm doing this because you're not actually gonna see this happen because we're using oxygen. So a lot of this stuff is gonna be done inside of oxygen, but I wanna show you what the CSS actually ends up looking like, right? So team card, double underscore uh, title, or it would be, what was it? It was a person's name, okay? So, and I'll just do, let me just copy these and make it real fast, right? So this is the person's name. And then we have another one, which was the person's title, team card, okay? Uh, title goes here, all right, perfect. And then you have your icons or your icon. It was social icon, I think is what we called it. Social icon. Okay, see how flat this is? It's literally the browser can go straight from top to bottom, right? It doesn't have to go left to right at all. Um, this is BIM, this is ultra clean. This is ultra efficient. This is what you're trying to achieve, okay? All right, just wanted to show you that real quick. Okay, let's go ahead and actually get to building. So I'm gonna zoom out. Here's our example right here. I'm gonna try to use vanilla oxygen, so I'm gonna avoid using um, automatic CSS for anything. We'll just use straight up vanilla oxygen. That way everybody can easily follow along. All right, the first thing I wanna do is just quickly whip up this, uh, this grid, which is gonna be harder because I'm not using automatic CSS, but we're gonna add a div. And this can actually have its own class, right? So you could say, um, this is gonna be a grid for team cards. So you can say team cards grid, right? So we'll do team cards uh, grid, just like this, single, single dashes, team cards grid. All right, now I'm going to enable the grid. We're gonna go with 100% on the width here. And then we're going to say the column count is gonna be three, the minimum width is gonna be two, the gap is going to be uh, in, we'll just stick to rims. We'll make that super easy. So we'll do three rims as our gap. Our gap here is gonna be three rims as well. We do wanna stretch our cards horizontally and vertically. And I think that should be good enough. All right, we're gonna create a div now. Okay, and this is gonna be our first component, our card, right? This is the thing that's reusable everywhere on the website. So I'm going to say team card. That's what we're gonna call it, right? We already discussed what our naming convention is gonna be. So this is gonna be a team card. And the first thing I'm gonna do is just add all of my HTML elements in there. So I'm gonna add my wrappers, my images, my headings, my text, all the stuff that I actually need before I get into styling the card. So I'm gonna take a look at this. and. This, this will help you from a standpoint of structure as well. Just being able to look at components and say, what is needed to build this thing? Well, we already added the div for the actual card itself. So what else do we need? We need a wrapper for this image. It's always smart to put a, a wrapper on an image. That's a div. And then the image is inside the div. And the reason is it gives you more flexibility in the future. Um, you can do different padding spacing flexibility with that. You can do, uh, one, one of the big ones is pseudo elements because you can't attach pseudo elements to images. So if you have a wrapper for the image, you now have pseudo elements available to you. So it's just smart, good practice to have a wrapper for your images. So we're gonna have a wrapper and then an image. We're gonna have a heading, we're gonna have text, and then we're gonna have more text, so two texts. Then we're gonna have a wrapper for our icons and then we're gonna have the actual icons. And then those icons need to be link wrappers so that they can be uh, link, linkable, clickable, okay? All right, so let's go ahead and just start dumping elements in here. So there's gonna be a div, that's our image wrapper. There's gonna be an image inside of that div, perfect. Now I'm going to grab my whole thing. Let me, let me open the structure panel as well so you guys can see the structure here. All right, so you're looking at this right here. Um, no, this right here. So I'm going to rename this. This is going to be our team card. 
This doesn't have anything to do with classes or styling or anything else. This is just structural organization in the builder. This, uh, I'm not gonna give everything a name. Just watch the team card. You can see the structure get built underneath it, all right? So I have the team card selected. I'm now gonna add my heading. This is going to be an H3. I wanna change that now so I don't actually uh, accidentally forget. So that's gonna be an H3. Then I'm gonna use text below that. I'm gonna have more text below that. Oh, I forgot one thing. Um, so we need a wrapper for our body text. So all this section, that's another invisible component, uh, would probably be best served to have a wrapper. It's not required, but it would. It, it's going to give you more options in the future, okay? And I'll explain what one of those options might be. So I have my team card selected. I'm going to add a div. And this div is going to be the wrapper for all of this text-based content right here. So I'm going to move this up. I'm going to drag my heading into that div. I'm going to drag my text in. I'm going to drag this other text in. I'm going to make sure the heading's at the top. Then I'm going to also in this wrapper, and let's see, should we do it inside the wrapper or outside? I would say inside the wrapper. We also have another div, and this div is going to be the wrapper for our icons. And then I need a icon in here, just one, because I want to do something to it before I duplicate it, okay? All right, so all of our HTML elements are now piled into this team card. The structure is the way that it needs to be. I Before I do anything else, absolutely before I do anything else, etch this into your mind. You have to give every element a class. We talked about this a little bit ago, but every element now needs a class. So what I'm gonna do is grab the image and this is gonna be team card, double underscore headshot. And remember, this is my headshot image, okay? Good, then I'm going to click on this little up and that's gonna grab the wrapper. And so I'm gonna say team card and I can look over here to make sure that it's grabbing the wrapper. Team card, headshot wrapper, bam. So now those two first elements have custom classes and they're following BIM, right? And we'll look at the, the um, selectors panel in just a minute and you'll see the organization. Now I'm gonna grab this heading. This is gonna be team card double underscore. And this actually, we're not gonna call heading. We talked about calling this um, name, right? The person's name. So team card name. And then the next one down is this little title right here. Um, so we're going to call this team card double underscore title. All right. And then we're going to do this one, which is the their bio. So we'll do team card bio, team card bio. Perfect. Now we're going to grab the, oh, we didn't grab the wrapper yet. Okay, so this wrapper right here needs team card. And you can call these um, content wrappers a lot of different things. I typically use inner. So there's an inner wrapper or you could do um, body wrapper or something like that. Let's do, let's do body wrapper, all right? Um, next is this wrapper for the icons. So we're gonna do team card, double underscore icons wrapper. And I do it plural because I'm letting you know it wraps all the icons. If I did icon wrapper, it might seem like it only wraps one icon. But if it's the icons wrapper, then we know just by reading it that it wraps all of the icons, okay? So I'm gonna add that icons wrapper. And then I'm going to grab the icon itself. And this is gonna be a team card double underscore icon. Perfect. And notice I'm not nesting anything. It wasn't team card icons wrapper double underscore icon it's not that I, I know i've i've done that once or twice in the past before in other tutorials it's not that just don't do that okay um I'm, I'm going back on that it's official don't do that all right so team card icon is the class that i want and now that i've given it a class i'm free to duplicate it all right so we have three uh icons now now that everything has its own custom class i'm free to start styling things okay so let's go ahead and whip up the styling of this card. I'm gonna start at the top. We're gonna grab the team card. Make sure you're on the class. Every time you style something, make sure you're on the custom class. All right, so we're gonna add padding to start out with. I'm gonna use M units. I'm gonna make, um, I'll do one M. Cause it's actually, it's not a lot of padding. It's just a little bit of padding. So I'll do one M. We're gonna add a border real quick. So we're gonna add a um, DDD colored border, just like a, a light gray. And of course, you know, the borders area and oxygen always completely lags out on me. And I, I don't think it's just me. In fact, I want you guys to check and let me know if it's just me. Look at that, look how long that took. I typed that like eight seconds ago. I'm gonna click solid and watch. It's gonna take like five, six seconds for it to show up. 
Okay, so I've got that. Let's do a border radius while we're here so we don't have to come back to this god-awful borders panel. Uh, I'm going to do 0.25M because it's just a little tiny uh, border. Uh, we need to make sure this is one pixel, so it's a small border. All right, that's good to go. What else do we need to do? We need a box shadow. So we're going to go effects, box shadow. I'm just going to select black, and we're going to come down to like, uh, I don't know, 10%. And then we're going to do a one pixel horizontal offset, maybe a six pixel vertical offset, 20 blur and zero on our spread. Okay, so now we have our shadow, we have our border, our padding, that looks good. Next thing I want to do is, and this is why I have a wrapper, team card body wrapper. See how this padding right here is kind of small, but it looks like there's actually more padding in this bottom part. And that's what that wrapper gives us the ability to make this easy. So I don't have to manipulate individual elements in here or hope that, you know, like these would be fine. The, the heading, the tech, because they're not long enough. But if you had a really long name, it may stretch to all the way over here. And that wouldn't look very good, right? So this absolutely needs its own kind of padding in here. So I'm going to use, we'll just stick with M's for now. So I'm going to do padding M's and we'll put 2M and then apply all just like that. And so that takes care of my extra padding in the lower part of this card. But I do also on my team card body wrapper want to go vertical and center with our flex alignment. All right. Wow. What's all right. Come on, oxygen. Vertical and then center. Perfect. So now you can see the icons automatically centered themselves. Um, what I also want to do is typography text alignment center is going to make sure all my text is center aligned, which if you look at this card, it's pretty much all center aligned. No issues there. Okay. Let's put somebody's actual name in here. So we're going to do Luke Jacobs. Now I want to make the point here. He's a marketing manager that you would not be doing this manually. Um, to really follow best practices here, we would be using a custom post type and a repeater to query these items onto the page. But this is that's beyond the scope of this tutorial, right? We're just talking about BIM and styling and organization, okay? So I'm going to go to Lorem Ipsum real quick, and I'm just going to grab this guy's bio, this guy's bio, right? Um, we're going to put it in right here. So Luke Jacobs is a marketing manager. And then what I'm going to do is grab the wrapper that's on these icons. And now we can go horizontal flex with these. And we can also add a gap here. And I'll just do a gap of 1M maybe, or maybe 0.5M. Okay, perfect. And I can, uh, let's, let's style some more spacing. So let's tackle this team card bio. If we look at this, we have a little bit less line height, uh, smaller text for sure. And then we need some uh, margin on top and bottom, okay? So I'm going to change the font size first. We're gonna go with 1.6. I'm going to change the line height to 1.4, somewhere in there. I can change my color. Let's just do um, 999, no, let's do 555, 777, let's do 777. And then let's do top and bottom margin. So M of, let's try one first, bottom M of one. All right, let's take a look here. It's looking like maybe 1.5 and 1.5 would do the trick. Okay, so now we have, and normally I would be using automatic CSS. I wouldn't be guessing at numbers. I would just be using variables. Um, it would be it would be much easier, but nevertheless, we're using vanilla oxygen. So now what I want to do is change these into their icons. So we have Facebook, Twitter, and LinkedIn. So this is going to be Facebook. I'm going to select this one. This one's going to be Twitter. Twitter. Choose that one. This one's going to be LinkedIn. And that one's going to be that. And then they also need to be, and look, I'm on the class. So if I change this to solid, they're all going to change to solid, right? And then they can all have a background color. We'll do uh, E5, E5, E5 maybe. Yeah, okay. That's fine. We'll, we'll do that. Um, I also need to change the icon size, maybe something like 18, space around icon, maybe something like 12, 10. 16, let's check these. Oh, that's really close. Okay, um, good. So no problem there. How's our general spacing looking? That's looking pretty good. I mean, we're using a different font and all that stuff. This marketing manager thing needs to definitely be 
777 probably as well. Font size, RAM of 1.5, 1 1.4. Let's do 1.4, okay? All right, that's looking pretty good. Let's do, I, th I think that's all right. Let's add the actual photo in. So I'm gonna save this. Save, okay, and save. Perfect. All right, let's browse and let's throw all of these downloads. Doot, doot, doot in okay upload 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 all right so here's this guy so we're going to grab him insert there we go and then i'm going to go width of 100 percent i'm going to make sure that the size is full so it's large enough to actually go all the way across there we go and object fit i'm going to change to cover and if all the images weren't the same height, I believe they are, but just if they weren't, it's you want to set a height on these. And so we'll do a rim of uh, 50. Nope, that's too big. 40, 30, 35. All right, we'll do 35 rim. And because I did object fit cover, it's never going to warp the image, right? A lot of people are afraid to put heights on images with widths because it can, it can warp the image. But when you use object fit cover, you're not going to run into that problem. And Oxygen 4.0 actually puts that right there for you. So it's very easy. Or in Automatic CSS, you can just drop an Object Fit Cover class onto the thing. Um, or you can just write Object Fit Cover in the custom CSS. There's a lot of ways to accomplish it. But this makes it um, super easy to attach to a custom class. Okay, I also, on this headshot, um, I want to change the border radius. So we're going to make the border radius... 0.25M to exactly match the radius of our card. I'm gonna go ahead and save our work here because that's a, always a good idea inside of Oxygen. And let's take a look at this on the front end. So we're gonna go exit to front end. Perfect. So there's our team card component right here. Now remember guys, don't leave because we still have to make a dark version of this. And I want you to see how modification works in BIM. So we've, you know, we've got a pretty good looking card here, right? All right, so I can duplicate this card now with confidence, because I've created a nice globally styled component. I can change this image if I, what happened? Okay, I can change this image if I want to. So this is gonna be her. And this other one is gonna be other dude buddy over here. Wow, what I don't know what Oxygen's doing with, it's like blacking out on me. Um, and then it comes back. I don't know if that's my screen recording or if that's Oxygen. Okay, so they're not all Luke Jacobs. We're gonna go Sarah Grant, Philip Hunt. Sarah Grant, and then this is uh, Philip Hunt. Cool. And they can all be marketing managers, whatever. So there's our three cards. Now, let's take a look at some things before we move on. Like, we have a beautiful card. The question is, is the underlying framework, the underlying styling as beautiful, as clean as the visual aspects of this card? Well, let's go to selectors, right? So we go to our selectors panel. I'm gonna open up our selectors. And I don't think you guys can see, so I'm going to move this up here above my head, and I'll scroll down. Okay, we're back. I, I accidentally closed the, uh, the the screen recording software. Okay. Um, anyway, so let's let's take a look at this. So we have, uh, look at this, team card, team card headshot, team card headshot wrapper, team card name, team card title, team card bio, team card body wrapper, team card icons wrapper, team card icon. All organized. They all clearly go together you can not even know what this thing looks like and look at the class names and the structure and know that okay we've got a block called team card here's all of our elements nothing is currently being modified it's just easy it's so simple and it's so clean and it's so scalable watch how scalable this is right so if somebody comes along they're like hey the um the name part of that card needs to actually be the um, a, a different color. Let's say they need to be red, okay? So I go to team card name, change the text color to red. They all turn red. It doesn't matter if there's three of them, 30 of them, 300 of them, or 3,000 of them. They all turn red. And I can change that with confidence knowing that this class has not been used on any other component on this website. So very, very scalable, very, very maintainable. Any part of this card, I can style differently. I can change the styling and I can do it with confidence and I can know that all of my components are going to look and feel exactly the same way.
Okay, so what we have to do now is create a modified version of this card. We wanna create a dark card. And in order to do that, I need to select the card and I need to create a modifier class. So we're gonna modify the team card. So we're gonna write team card and then modifier in BIM is a double dash and I'm gonna write dark. And now, unfortunately, we have to go in, it's better to go into a style sheet and do this because we have to target some things specifically. And I also want to, uh, we, we don't wanna bounce back and forth between builder, style sheet, builder, style sheet, right? Because some of these things just cannot be targeted properly inside of Oxygen. So I'm gonna go ahead and open up style sheets and I'm gonna open my BIM style sheet. One little note here is, I don't make a style sheet called BIM, right? Make a style sheet called whatever you're styling. So I would make a style sheet called team cards and that would put all my team card styling into the team cards style sheet. So that keeps your style sheets nice and organized. All right, I'm gonna zoom in here. And I know that this card in the middle has the team card dark class and that's what I'm gonna be targeting. Team card double dash dark. And this is really the only time in BIM where you actually use specificity, right? So under my team card dark, I want to actually just my team card dark in general, I wanna change the background color up. So we're gonna do background color and we're gonna do 111 on our team card dark. Notice I didn't do this. I didn't do team card, team card dark, right? It's, I keep it as flat as possible. So I'm just targeting team card dark gets this background color and you see the effect that we get there. Now we need to target the elements inside of here, right? So I'm gonna do team card double dash dark and then I'm going to target the team card title, right? Or the team card name, the person's name. So I can do this and I'm going to do color and we'll make the team card name FFF. So it'll be pure white. And then I wanna target team card dark. So remember, I'm only changing this thing if the modifier is present, right? So team, I'll zoom in a little more for you. Team card dark, we're gonna target the team card double underscore title. And this is gonna be color of, let's do, so the background's 111, let's try 444. No, 888, 999, let's make it a little lighter, just like that, 999, okay? Now, if I also want the body text to be that color, I can copy this, make a comma and paste, and then I change this to bio, right? Because that was the bio text. So now the bio and the title are the same exact color, and this is a more efficient way to write the CSS, all right? Um, I know these icons for sure. Um, we, we, we want those to be a different color, right? So I'm gonna do team card double dash dark and then team card double underscore icon. And I need to see how these are structured. I wonder if they use background color. Let's just try red. Oh, they do, check that out. Okay, awesome. I'm just gonna leave that for a minute and then border color uh, red as well. Awesome, that's good. Uh, and then the icon color itself, can it be white? Yes, okay, this is gonna be easy to target. And look, I didn't need to do like this, like target an SVG. Remember we talked about try to avoid styling HTML elements with your CSS, style things with custom classes. Notice I also did not have to do team card double underscore uh, icons wrapper and then team card icon, you'll see a lot of people do this. And this is what I was talking about with specificity and left to right processing and non-flat CSS. We want the CSS to be as flat as possible. So I only am targeting team card, dark team card icon. I'm, I'm making my changes there, okay? So let's see what we actually wanna do with our background color. We may want to go with something like 444. Yes, I believe that's what we wanna do. Border color is gonna be the same. 44, oh, not FFF, 444. And then our color is gonna be something like 777. No, that's, that's not enough, 999. We'll do 999 on that, okay. And that's it. So a little bit of CSS and look how organized this CSS is. And anybody can come and see exactly what's going on here. They know exactly what's changing, what we're targeting. There's no questions. Um, there's no uh, class collision potential super scalable, super uh, manageable, everything is good to go. So now watch this. I'm gonna take off the, let me zoom out. We don't need to be all zoomed in anymore. So I'm gonna grab my card here. I'm gonna remove the team card dark. Let's say we wanted Philip. Philip, we want you to, to have the dark card, okay? So we're gonna say team card dark. 
bam. And now Philip's card is dark and everything has changed to match it. Now I didn't do the hovers on the icons and all that stuff, but you get the point, right? What if we wanted Luke to also have a dark card? Maybe we want Sarah to stand out by having, um, I'll do team card dark by having the only light card. So I'll do team card dark here. So now Luke and Philip have dark cards and she has a light card. See how this is a modifier class and we didn't have to create all new classes for all these things to create a dark card. We created one modifier class and we leveraged that class to target the elements that are part of this block, this component. This is BIM and this is absolutely a game changer for building your websites for all of the reasons that we just covered. Let me go back to here, back to camera. Okay, so I hope this, first of all, I hope it made sense. I know we covered a lot of stuff. Um, if you found this helpful, hit like, hit subscribe, drop a comment below. Let me know some things like, hey, have you been using BIM already? How has it changed your development? I want you to let me know in the comments. Did you not even know what BIM was before you watched this video? Drop a comment below and let me know if this video made sense to you or if you have any questions. If you have any questions, drop those as well. As you guys know, I go through and respond to every single comment. I'm going to try to help you as much as, as possible. And I will be using BIM. I've already been, I already use BIM in all my other tutorials. Here's the official tutorial on BIM. You'll see me using it more um, in future tutorials. So you're gonna pick up more and more as we go along. Of course, if you want more in-depth stuff, um, super granular uh, on not just development, but agency-related business stuff, freelancer stuff, SEO, uh, accessibility, join the inner circle. The inner circle is where all that really gold stuff is at. If you think these free tutorials are gold, the inner circle is where the real gold is, okay? Um, but that's it. That's the end of this tutorial. Thank you, guys. Uh, if you see anybody asking about BIM or have any questions about BIM, share this video with them. Love you guys. I'll be back very, very soon. I'm out. Peace.